Hello gardening fans, on this episode of Street Smart Gardener, we're going to talk about Japanese maples. I hope these tips were helpful for you. <laughs> Today on Street Smart Gardener, we're going to learn how to talk. We have quite a diverse selection here at the Garden Center of different varieties. I'm going to talk about a few and some general care practices that you can do when planting your Japanese maple. Here's an interesting one called Sangu Kaku. It's uh, got red bark on it. It's very showy in the, against the winter, uh, the snow and so forth. Very interesting. Here's another one called Shiraz and it's got a little pink color to it probably gets about 15, 18 feet or so. Uh, one of my favorites here is the Ryusin. And what I like about it is it cascades. And as it gets older, it'll still keep cascading. It'll get taller, up 12 foot, and it's just like this pendulum of foliage. And it gets nice orange color in the fall. And a pretty neat plant, I like it a lot. We took this Japanese maple, and if you can see the trunk, we've, uh, spiraled that. And how that was done when it was young, we just took a pipe when this was small in size and the, and the trunk was buoyant. We stuck the pipe in and then you wrap the Jap maple around that pipe and then let it mature and harden off and then you slide the pipe out. And it gives us some character and something different for your garden. Some other interesting ones if you want something that's weeping and green in color is the Veritas. It gets very fiery orange in the fall and it's easy to maintain. Another one that is my favorite that I've used at my home is the Anaba Shadar. Now, what I like about this one is it's got the purple hues to it um, and a cascading weeper again. Another very popular one that you see as an upright variety is Bloodgood for our area. Now, this can get up 25, 30 feet, but takes quite some time. And then a very popular one that's a weeper in our area that does very well is Crimson Queen. It has a little brighter red foliage on it and the leaf is more cut. Now, some general care practices for Japanese maple. They like wind protection. They're not the plant that you want to put out in the exposed condition up on the hill out in the country. They need a little bit of shelter, courtyards, and they need some shade. Uh, there's certain books that are going to say full sun, but from trial and street barn experience, I'm going to tell you they're going to need some shade. The first year, I would recommend winterizing them with a burlap screen to help buffer the wind against the uh, uh, foliage and keep them from dehydrating. Some general practices when planting them, Japanese maple love good organics. So mix in that compost and they need well-drained soil rich in organics. So mix in the compost. If you have clay and hard pan you might want to add a little gypsum or just plant them up higher on top of the ground so that the ball is above and you have that slow taper like a pitcher's mound effect so the plant can drain. But good organics, a light feed, and keep on the watering right on up through until ground freeze so that the plant can absorb the water prior to the roots freezing. Japanese maples will also, in your first year when they're acclimating, you'll notice there might be leaf scorch going on. Basically what that is is the tips of the leaves might get a little brown. They're pretty finicky. They notice a change in a water type and atmospheric pressure, but don't be alarmed. It's purely cosmetic while the plant is trying to acclimate. And then when it drops its leaves, sets bud, and breaks bud the following spring, the leaves should be fine and recover just fine. Japanese maple, great plant. They work well in the landscape. They're a nice focal point, and they add some interesting character and color to your garden. Stop on down to WW Nursery and Garden Center, Apple Lake in New York. Check out our nice selection of Japanese maple. And remember, you can do it. So let's go green together.